Yep, 55 condoms for 15 bucks. What? Ah, oh, my monitor keeps shutting off. You should ask Stuart Marlantis to help. Really? Yeah, let's check out his new Tech Talk segment. Going to college is complicated enough. You've got classes, scholarships and financial aid, homework and midterms, not to mention a social life as well. Not everyone has the time to become a computer science major. That's where I come in. On Tech Talk with Stuart Marlantis, I'll answer all your tech questions without the complications. Today on Tech Talk with Stuart Marlantis, we'll be talking about laptops. We're a few weeks into fall quarter here at the UW, and I'm sure you've seen tons of laptops both across campus and in class. Maybe you haven't purchased one yet because you're afraid that it wouldn't be worth the money. I can just take notes on paper, right? Or maybe you do have a laptop, but it's old and broken. Regardless, this episode is for you. First question, Mac or PC? Macs are very popular among college students, and for good reason. They're solid and stable, easy to use, look nice, and are very cool. But if there's one downside to Macs, it's the price to performance factor. Just like any brand name clothing, Apple charges a premium for their brand. Another downside to Macs is uniqueness. If you want to stand out in a crowd, don't get a Mac. I've seen hundreds of little glowing apples across campus, but never a laptop like mine. Also, Macs don't offer a lot of choice, as there are only a limited number of models available. So what about PCs? Shopping for a PC can be overwhelming. There are essentially infinite choices in all sizes, shapes, and colors. The price can range anywhere from $200 to many thousands. Because of the number of choices, you can buy a PC based on your usage requirements. Need something indestructible? Buy a ThinkPad. Want something sleek and sexy? Check out the Samsung Series 7, Series 9, or HP Envy. Need good price to performance without sacrificing quality? Try ASUS. There really is something for everyone. And if all you need is just something to take notes on, get a netbook. They're cheap, but they get the job done. For netbooks, again, I'd recommend ASUS. So, Get a Mac if you're doing a lot of graphic design work or photo editing, and get a PC if you're just taking notes or want to play a lot of games. But what about tablets? They seem to be all the rage now and are popping up everywhere. But are they powerful enough to tackle a student's workload? We'll answer that question in another episode. Thanks for watching Tech Talk. Questions or comments are much appreciated. Direct both to techtalk at stuartmarlantis.com. Show notes and links to products mentioned in this episode are available on youtube.com slash the daily. Join us next time on Tech Talk, and we'll answer all your tech questions. Stay tuned for more stories. After this short break. So where are you living this year? Are you still in those disgusting dorms? OK, first of all, the dorms are not disgusting. And second of all, I live in Poplar, which is brand new. We have new residence halls? Yeah, in West Campus. Let's take a look at their profile. If you have been around the Southwest Campus recently, I'm sure you have noticed the stunning new additions to the University of Washington campus. We spoke to Rob Lubin, who was able to tell us a bit about the dorms. Poplar and Cedar are the first two new halls that we've, we've built. Cedar is a student-focused apartment building, predominantly four-bedroom apartments with two baths and a kitchen, kitchen living room. And Poplar are uh, double rooms with private baths, um, residence hall rooms. And we kind of distinguish residence hall from apartments of whether you're on a meal plan or not, right? And whether there's cooking facilities in, in the unit. These new buildings and all they have to offer within them have received positive feedback from their new residents. A community assistant at the new Cedar apartment tells us more about them and shares her experience about living there. It's really special in the sense that we are apartments um, and but residence halls at the same time so it's kind of a hybrid of independence for students they can you know live in an apartment have their own room but also they have all the opportunities that you would have in the dorms as far as building community going to residence hall events uh, participating in CASA which is our our hall council so they can get involved still on campus really close to campus we're also LEED Silver um, certified which means that there's a lot of really great qualities as far as energy conservation go. It's, we rank really high on the national standard, so um, that's pretty cool as well. So it's, um, yeah, there's a lot of cool things about it. <laughs> I love the terrace. Um, I really like being able to go outside. Um, I think that's really cool. Uh, just it is kind of, you know, it's new. Everyone loves the whole new and shiny aspect of it. I think our lounges are pretty cool. East Lounge is pretty cool too. There's a kitchen in there, so we can have um, events for the community that involve cooking. Um, I think that's pretty special, so, um, and I love that it's really close to campus, only a few, uh, few blocks away. Poplar Hall, our other new dorm on campus, 
prides itself in being the most sustainable hall on campus. Thomas, a resident advisor, gives us more insight into this new resident hall. This is the most sustainable dorm hall. Um, Poplar was specifically designed. It uses less water, it uses less electricity. Uh, it's just an awesome building. And then we also talk, do a lot about sustainability issues. Um, we'll have a lot of programs that deal with how to be more eco-friendly or how to reduce your carbon footprint, so stuff like that. Definitely my favorite part about Poplar, the building itself, is the terrace just because it's so nice and it's green and you can see all the other buildings and it's raining now, which sucks, but usually on, on sunny days, it's pretty nice. In addition to the fabulous new living facilities, Poplar Hall is also home to a new living resource center. In Poplar, we have our learning resource center, which is a great um, resource for all students who need help with math, uh, writing, chemistry, all that fun stuff. It's great help. Uh, the tutors here are from Clue and they just know what they're doing. Cedar and Poplar Hall are just the beginning of the new buildings being built on the UW campus. So next time you're down on the southwest side of campus, make sure to stop by and check out these awesome new additions to the UW. Wow, those are way nicer than the dorms I lived in last year. Yeah, new stuff is always great. You know, the Department of Atmospheric Science has just got some cool new stuff. What kind? I don't know. Let's take a look. The transition from summer to autumn is clearer than ever at the UW, with leaves changing from green to orange and skies from blue to gray. With the shift into fall, weather is coming up on its stormiest time of the year. But for the first time, the Department of Atmospheric Sciences will be able to predict storms before they strike thanks to a newly installed coastal radar. Cliff Mass, atmospheric science professor and one of the main figures responsible for the installation, explains more. The National Weather Service put a series of radars in, in the late 1980s, early 1990s. And uh, so we got two radars, one in Portland and one in Seattle. Uh, the trouble is the Olympics and the coastal mountains blocked the radar beam. So we couldn't see the coast and we couldn't see offshore. And a lot of people noticed that. And so over the last 20 years, a number of us have been working to try to get this radar. And now we have one on the coast. The new radar has been installed at Langley Hill, a few miles east of the Pacific coast. Having coastal radar will immensely improve weather prediction capabilities in the Northwest. For us, it means that we can see storms coming in off the Pacific where we couldn't see them before. We have a lot of major weather coming in off the Pacific and now we can look offshore and see the storms, fronts, whatever coming in. So how does weather radar technology work? Weather radar starts off by seeing precipitation and that's when you watch radar on TV or whatever or on the web, you know, it tells you the intensity of precipitation. But uh, the radars also are Doppler radars, which mean they can also see velocity. So they can measure the velocity of the precipitation towards or away from you. And the new radars, like this radar, is what's called dual polarization. It can also tell the type of precipitation as well. The Department of Atmospheric Sciences studies a wide range of topics related to weather and climate. Well, this is a very large department, and we have weather research and climate research on many topics. Everything from how, you know, how the climate system works, what will global warming do globally and locally, we have people studying clouds, people studying ice cores to see how climate has changed over the last 100,000 years. Uh, we have people working on understanding how the winds work, we call that dynamics. We have people working on radiation, how that works in the atmosphere. So this department is a very wide range of department and we're studying many different aspects of weather and climate. Well, we're all very happy to have the radar now and it's going to cause an extraordinary improvement in forecasting and our understanding of the weather here in the Northwest. For more information about the Department of Atmospheric Sciences, visit their website at www.atmos.washington.edu. Well, that's all we've got for you today. Stay tuned every Saturday night at 7 for more stories. You can also hit us up on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash the daily. I'm Evelyn Osborne. And I'm Austin Seatentoff. See you next time. On The Daily's Double Shot.